we're just coming into Hobart now and you can see that Mount Wellington's got a bit of snow on it. I don't think it's as much as they were predicting. Um, but yeah, anyway, a bit of a windy, blustery, cold, fast day um, in Hobart. Basically, we're just trying to scope out where we want to spend the next few days. So we're in Hobart this afternoon, so we just come down Dockside uh, to have a look around, making the most of a nice afternoon in between some rainy days. So yeah, just have a look around down here. This is Constitution Dock. Good morning, uh, we're coming to you today from Hobart, uh, wet Hobart this morning. So we're on our way to go and see what has been on my certainly bucket list, and I think your bucket list as well, is yep. to go and have a look at the Salamanca markets. So pretty famous markets here in Hobart. Uh, looking forward to that, maybe getting some nice food, at least having a good look around anyway. See ya. Morning. Can I get We just uh, called into a beautiful little town called Richmond. That's so about 80 k's from Hobart. Um, yeah, beautiful. Drink Tasmania, let's have a look here. We're doing a so we're doing a little gin tasting at this Tasmanian drink house, whatever they call it. Similar that anyway. It's called Drink Tasmania. seems to have cleared off the top of the mountain so yeah it's just heading up there now if you see me walking down the street staring at the sky and dragging my two feet you just pass me by Used to make me cry But you can make me whole again And if you see me with another girl Laughing and joking Doing what I can I won't put you down Cause I want you around Cause you can make me whole again Looking back on where we first met I cannot escape and I cannot forget it. Baby, you're the one. You still turn me on. You can make me whole. Away. But I see the 
sunrise oh, oh, Just like the other day Picture your eyes as I fall asleep Tell myself it's alright oh, oh, As the tears go by Good morning. Uh, we're leaving Hobart this morning. Morning. To, yeah, we're heading to um, the Tasman Peninsula. We've got um, a couple of things planned. Obviously, Port Arthur is high on the list of things to do. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you how beautiful it is here in Hobart today. Of course, the day we're leaving, it has turned on a spectacular day. Um, but we're coming back in about four weeks for a uh, for Christmas. Oh well, sorry, just after Christmas. Um, and we'll stay here through till New Year, which will be really great. I think we've enjoyed our time in Hobart, but we've been able to catch up on a lot of stuff, fix a broken tap and do a few little odd jobs. Yeah, anyway. place called Denali and we've got to cross over this bridge. The bridge has been turned so the sailing boat can get through. How cool is that? Met you out late last night Lost my voice, but you didn't mind Held my waist to your own Danced all night <laughs> So we've just pulled up at our spot at New Beena. We're staying at the RSL Club. They have a free camp out the back. Of, it's a $10 donation, um, but they give you a voucher for the bar. Looks pretty good. We've got the place to ourselves. Um... <laughs> But one of the things that Darren bought a while ago was a whippersnipper. And I laughed when he got it. But it, gee, it comes in handy when you just want to tidy up your site. They've been getting a lot of rain in Tassie. And I guess they um, probably only get a mower in once a week. So here he is. <laughs> How are you? Getting our lawn set up. <laughs> I'm really enjoying the fact that we'll be able to have a fire, which will be really nice. We haven't been able to have a fire for a bit. But yeah, I think that's a pretty good spot. What do you reckon, love? Yeah, it's about the only uh, yard work I like doing these days. <laughs> and the good thing is, Coopy can have a little bit of freedom here, at least until some newbies turn up, which is good. We don't have to just keep him permanently on the lead. Um, he's a good dog anyway, but you know, you've got to be a bit careful. Anyhow, I'd better go and unpack. Kiss me slow, morning comes and you text me We should go somewhere that we can hang our souls by our teeth Falling quickly oh, Well, good morning. So today we're here at Port Arthur, the historical site. We tried to come yesterday, um, but they had a plumbing issue, so they closed the park for the day. Uh, anyway, we're here to check it out for a few hours. I've been before and I loved it, so I'm really excited for Darren to come and see it. 
Um, and we've been given a gorgeous morning, so thank you. Um, because we're going to be outside most of the morning, so that's really good. Anyhow, see you in there. In Devonby. It's interesting, you can see out there that, um, you know, it's obviously ruins. And then there's a picture here of what it used to look like. So all of this area up here is missing. Um, your point of reference is the mill, I'm sorry, the water tank or the turret. And yeah, all that is all gone. And all this is, all this is all gone. And that's the main building. What did you do this for? Settle down for a little bit. You look like any other fool I know. So this is what they call a separate prison. So Sharon and I just got let in by the cleaner. So we got it to ourselves. The separate prison was built on a hill at the edge of the settlement. Its isolation and high walls were designed to threaten anyone contemplating disobedience with a mysterious and awful fate. When it was built, new ideas about reforming criminals were sweeping the world. It was now thought that physical punishment only hardened a man, but in a quiet, ordered atmosphere, a man can contemplate his sin and change his life. A new kind of building was to deliver this new system. The prison had four wings, radiating from a central area, allowed for close and constant surveillance. The cells were small and there were special punishment cells, which took solitary punishment to a new level of cruelty. For any misdemeanour, a man was locked in total darkness and silence for between several hours and 30 days on bread and water. After three days, he was taken out for an hour's exercise each day. Each new arrival spent four to 12 months in the separate prison, before being assigned to work outside on the settlement. Upon entering the prison, each man was uh, allocated a number. His name was no longer spoken. It was only to communicate with staff. The corridors were laid with mats and guards wore slippers so they could hear his every sound. They checked on him constantly through a peephole in his cell door. Apart from chapel, cleaning duty and an hour's exercise, he spent 23 hours every day in his tiny cell in solitude and silence. He has a small table, stool, bedding roll, night soil bucket and corner shelves for eating utensils, personal items, a cleaning kit, Bible and a prayer book. Here he ate, slept, and worked at tailoring and shoe making. Outside his cell, he was masked to prevent him from making contact with other inmates. He also exercised alone. Why would you say it like that? Don't you know dreams really come true when you give away your heart like that? So in the meantime, I'm thinking about it. Let it go, let it go. Fix itself, I'm thinking about it. Let it go, let it go. Oh, I'm thinking about it. Let it go, let it go. It'll all fix itself. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Oh, oh, oh. I know you work so hard. You can't wait to get out of this basement But if I take you this far You kill me just to find a replacement So in the meantime I'm thinking about it Let it go, let it go It'll all fix itself I'm thinking about it Let it go, let it go Hi, so <laughs> no say. So today, so today we're a little bit excited. We're going on a Pennacott Wilderness cruise. 
uh, in the Tasman Peninsula. Peninsula. Uh, so yeah, this cruise comes fairly highly recommended. So we're about to go in, pick our tickets up, and uh, yeah, we'll leave in about half an hour, I think. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, pretty cool. Stay tuned. Oh, okay. C'est l'histoire d'un homme qui tombe d'un immeuble de 50 étages. Le mec, au fur et à mesure de sa chute, il se répète sans cesse pour se rassurer. They have less oil on their feathers than lots of other seabirds. They start to sink, to become waterlogged, and they have to come up onto the rocks to dry themselves off. Arthur, you know, it's 50 meters deep, right through the middle there. It's quite productive. Schools of fish, calamari, all sorts of things. You can see the younger ones on the lower ledges there. They don't look quite as pretty as mum and dad yet. Going through the uppity dumpling stage. That's a big head along the tideline, that big brown algae bulk kelp growing there. Took a lot of that if we've done today. Jusqu'ici tout va bien. Jusqu'ici tout va bien. Mais l'important c'est pas la chute.
my beautiful little oh. circles around the waterfall there. This runs all year round, but it's usually just a damp patch on the rock. So this is Waterfall Bay. You can walk out here just to the lookouts up above us or along the top of the cliffs, actually all the way into Fortescue Bay. But I definitely recommend taking the track to Tasman's Arch in the Devil's Kitchen and then finding the track out to Waterfall Bay lookout. Um, definitely worth spending an hour and a half, two hours in the area. Nice easy walk. So stand up if of our cruise quite enjoyable certainly seen the rugged side of the coastline of Tasmania for sure amazing just got to jump back in our bus now it's about 20 minutes back heading down to the Remarkable Cave, which is just outside Port Arthur. It's about a 15 minute return walk from the car park. It's on a step. So this is Tasman Arch. Another day for you and me and 